I have my doubts. Uh, it's been a while since I've done this, and I've gotten uh, rather rusty. But just the same, uh, I have a story that needs... Oh, God damn it. I am so rusty. Hold on. I'm going to have these stupid lines all over my face if I don't fix this in a, in a hurry here. Good Lord. Uh, that's a promising start to my new venture. Good Lord. All right, there we go. So that seems to be working. This is, uh, I swear, the whole 20 minutes is just going to be working out the kinks. Let's see. So I will be able to see your chat at some point. All right, so it looks like we are live on YouTube and on Twitch. Both things that I want to have happen in uh, this whole thing. And then I'm going live. I don't want to install Mac OS Monterey at this moment. Thank you, Apple. I'm like three versions behind on this cocksucker. Oh, I'm not supposed to say uh, cocksucker on the editing stream. <sighs> it, I, you know, I was a sailor once. Uh, so, no, I just been on a boat. I wasn't in the Navy. It's not that dumb. Uh, but, uh, what do we got here? All right, so I've got a thesaurus happening. Maybe I can creep this computer over, move this coffee about here. Ergonomics is everything in a writing game, as you'll soon find out. Uh, let's see. Okay, does this work exactly so I can see? All right, Zach, ZYZ slash live. It do work. Cool. Uh, and then I think it's just uh, Twitch Zach ZYZ, so I can go ahead and spam this. All right, so I used to have an audience of four or five people that would uh, <laughs> could not sleep and would hang out every morning and edit with me, uh, but I didn't do this for like a year, um, like an entire year, and uh, that is why, uh, let me see. Okay, cool. Well, that's about all that I have to do, honestly. Uh, bah, 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 bah. It's linked it in a couple of places. So uh, if you have never tuned into one of these streams before and have already, uh, have not already checked the hell out, um, yeah, I'm Zach ZYZ. I'm a writer in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I am not successful, but I am prolific. Uh, I have maybe six books in print, uh, I think, although a bunch of them are really tiny. Uh, let me see. I know how to write, edit, and uh, uh, package a science fiction novel. So if that's something that you would like to learn at some point, you can hang out on the stream. Uh, I guess I write mainly a very intense science fiction. Um, let me see here. 
Let me get this knot out of my tweezers. Oh, I'm not like fully awake. I haven't uh I haven't drunk coffee or anything like that. Um and uh let me see. Let me pop it to the restream chat. So here's the way that I work. And this is my idea of how you should write <clears throat> a book or a novel. And as I uh, go through this whole thing, even if there is no audience or whatever, I'm going to explain the thing because really I'm reminding myself how to do this. I haven't done a major edit in a long time. It might have been a year or two since I've edited anything. Seriously, I have been working assiduously on a rewrite of a book called Rapazorus, which you can see right here. Mm. Our logo there. Um, so Rapazorus is, it was 800 pages when I started rewriting it. It's 950 some odd pages now. I am probably a year and a half out from completing the rewrite at my current pace, which is sometimes a chapter will take me like two weeks to just bulldog through. Um, I used to be very prolific um, back when I could go and write in coffee shops because there's nothing else to do. Uh, and now I'm at my home and distractions abound. So one of the reasons why I'm getting back into this editing stream is uh, when I am performing, I have to actually do the task at hand. So uh, hopefully this will just trick my brain into not being lazy and playing video all day. And um, also for the entire month of May, I'm gonna try to do this. And uh, I am also going on a no drinking, no carbs, no beaten off, no vices whatsoever for the entire month of May. I just wanna see how crazy I get. It might be uh, totally insane. I'm uh, 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 Generally, I would say that I'm uh, completely at the behest of my various vices. So this will be a new experience for me. So you can watch me slowly unravel over the course of that one month. Um, let me see. So right now this is only streaming to YouTube and Twitch. Uh, Restream cut down the number of channels that they would give you for free. So I may might pay the $20 to uh, stream to, I'd like to be on Facebook and uh, Twitter as well. But we'll see. You know, let me let me see if I can get into this routine and so forth. It is not certain yet whether or not I can get to editing. But before I was distracted, I was about to say that, um, so I have a methodology for writing books. And so Three Wolf here is about 16,000 words. Oh my God, <laughs> 16,000 words. Uh, as you can see here is about um, 70 pages double spaced uh, printed. It will come out to maybe about 60 to 70 pages because um, I'm going to typeset it real fat and so forth. Eventually, I would like to um, put it out as something about the size of this Clark's World that you see right here. Um, although Clark's World is like a couple hundred pages, I think. Yeah, it's like 109, 120 pages. So it won't be quite so fat. Um, but I will, I may just take you through the entire process of um, writing this book and maybe I'll hook up um, capture on like a design machine and I'll show you how I lay it out in InDesign. I'll show you how I generate the cover. I'm not going to use any AI bullshit. Just old fashioned stealing is uh, my preference. And uh, yeah, I might as well just from cover to cover for this story. Uh, Three Wolf is 16,000 words, which means it is too long for any magazine except for fantasy and science fiction. So I guess we'll submit it there. Um, they will say no, and then when they say no, I'll show you guys how to put it out yourself and say, fuck you, fantasy and science fiction. I'm good. You just don't know it. No, I'm not I'm not good enough. But someday, some way, some gay, uh, I will make it happen. Let's hop into it. Um, so my methodology is to write the entirety, that whole 16,000 words. I already did it. Uh, this story took a long time to write, actually. Um, it just uh, was one that I did in dribs and drabs over the last year. And uh, I'd say I spent about like six months back and forth just popping in on this every couple of days or whatever to write a little bit more. Now, this is one I was doing in between the other writing projects I was working on. And then I just had this idea and uh, wanted to execute it. So um, my, I first write the entire story, however long that takes. Um, it begins with um, just a germ of an idea, a scene that I want to see. And then I start uh, writing characters. And I try to start in the middle of the story or in some way um, jump readers into the action when I can. I don't think I did that in this story because there was a lot of backstory. Um, so I write the entire thing and then I do an edit myself. And an edit is really just sitting and reading every word and uh, reading through the story, looking for logical inconsistencies, looking for primarily 
lack of motivation, like lack of places where the story doesn't move because the characters don't want something and nothing is driving them forward. So that'd be the, the most critical spot there. Um, so that initial edit, um, I think you should do before you show your work to anybody. I think you should complete the story. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, it's big Jira. Thank God, Jira. You're the only one. You're the only one I can depend on right here. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're up at four in the morning. Anyhow, uh, this might be of interest to you because I'm uh, running down the entire way that we um, are going to do the editing process and how to make it happen. So in terms of writing a story, it really just has to do, and he says, 2 a.m. here, haven't slept yet. Hell yeah, we'll stay up all night. I'm going to do this for two or three hours. Um, so in terms of writing a story, it's really not difficult. Just start writing the story, sit down to do it for like an hour every day, and don't stop. Eventually, you will have something that looks like a story. It really just is persistence. It's no different than running a mile. Like maybe you can't run a mile in five minutes, but I bet you can run a mile in 45 minutes, just <laughs> dragging your ass across the line. Um, writing a story is no different, especially when you're starting out. Um, I would say I recommend to new people starting out, start out with a goal of writing a story that is 5,000 words long. Um, this is a good um, length for magazine subscriptions and, or mag magazine submissions. Um, and just work at that until you have it going. Then after you do it, um, you do an edit, which is where you sit down. First you read the story, wait about a week, then think about what could be better and different, implement those changes, then your first edit of your rough draft is done. Then you can start showing it to other people. You are here at this point. So next, I do the second edit. And the methodology that I'm going to do the second edit works at your home. You don't have to be on a live stream with people on Twitch. In fact, it works better if you are not. Uh, this just works for me because I have a desperate need for attention. Uh, <laughs> so the uh, I'm going to read aloud through the entire story. And as I read through the entire story, I'm going to be looking for phrases that don't sound right. Things that just catch my ear. I'm like, that's too wordy. Uh, you know, that doesn't make any sense. You know, that is the N-word for an entire paragraph. All those are things I'd like to take out of my story. Um, and I'm also looking for things to put in. Like if there's a more elegant way to put something. If um, a sentence needs clarification. Often there will be pronoun confusion on a line. And it's up to us to make it clear who the speaker is. Um, a lot of people don't like to have like he said, she said, she said, Jesus. It's not even a tongue twister. It's two words. Um, he said, she said, that kind of thing. Uh, they have a lot of that. And some readers don't like to see that. But in my mind, it is better to be clear who is saying what than to assume the reader can figure it out. Uh, a lot of readers are, you know, just... Um, not even reading at this point. So it has to be as clear as possible. Um, I will tell you up front that I have broken a number of rules in writing this story uh, because I'm arrogant. Uh, the writing in the story is not clear. It is not concise. And the wording is intentionally flowery and goofy because I want to have fun writing the story. So we're going to have to strip a bunch of that out because I just go too far. It's full of like rhymes and alliteration and... Um, I just I have a good time while I'm writing this shit, um, but it doesn't necessarily translate to people having a good time whilst they're reading it. So that's something to keep an eye out for. I'm bored of this preamble. Without further ado, let's get into Three Wolf. So Three Wolf is the story of a pack of bounty hunters that are going after a legendary bounty. And um, let's get into it right here. So this is Three Wolf by Zach ZYZ. That's me. And chapter one. All right, so I leave notes for myself as I'm writing. And uh, so some of these will have spoilers. Uh, this is me. Oh, okay. So um, here I actually wrote a prelude and then I cut it out um, because preludes are stupid. <laughs> the prelude actually did a decent job of uh, uh, sticking your right into the action where everybody's like coming apart. Um, here, let's see the entire thing. Uh, yeah, it was just like a short thing about how they had gotten fucked up by this wolf. And one of the characters was dead. We may go back and put that in here because our first chapter is like a lot of preamble telling you how the people got into the story and so forth. And generally those are boring. So the goal of my prelude here, ba -ba -ba. so this is like, what the hell was that? And he's bleeding his right hand. Oh yeah, Stripes doesn't actually die in this story. Uh, he was alive but short an ear. Wint had the worst of it. Oh yeah, Wint doesn't, he doesn't get slain. 
Um, okay. So we um, have that very... <laughs> I also love ducats. I like, I, I'm just including ducats. It's not set in Italy. I'm including ducats because uh, I like rappers. And rappers were obsessed with the word ducats, mostly because of Nas. Um, but in the, I, I want to say late 80s, early 90s. So you would hear the word ducats all the time. Well, without further ado, uh, let's read through it. So reading through each line. Uh, by the way, if you find a spot where I miss a comma or something, after my cursor has gone on to the next paragraph, um, if I catch it myself, I'm not going to give you a point. I will give you a point, and then when we publish the story, whoever has the most points will be the winner. Uh, you just have to find, like, one error, Jira, because <laughs> I don't think anybody is going to fucking uh, gander at this for, like, the rest of the week. But it will probably take me one week to edit the story. Oh, God, I'm saying that. Ten days. Ten days. All right. A hundred ducats for three wolf's head. Um, and then exclamation point. This is an okay opening line. I'm all right with it. Uh, let's see. A sad, remnant lim a sad remnant lingered on old man Moraney's face. He was strong once, but no longer. Lord Malorn... Mal oh, this is so hard. Lord Malorn... Mal bo -bo. This is, why do I do this to myself? Ah. <sighs> A sad remnant lingered on old man Moraney's face. He was strong once, but no longer. Lord Malorn Moraney of Skywork was three score, stooped and sallow. His beard was threadbare, his threat, his breath abominable. Um, I don't like the way that that works. His beard was threadbare, and his breath was abominable. All right, so um, when you do that kind of thing, his breath, abominable. You're trying to induce diction into the story there. It's just too much too early uh, in the story. It doesn't really produce the effect that I would like, um, so we just cut it out. Let's, uh, see, his beard was threadbare, his breath, abominable. <laughs> it works okay, Um if I'm like a newscaster, but it does not work in the context of this. His beard was threadbare, and his breath was abominable. From deep pits of discontent, the hoary old landlord's eyes squinted at the world like it was half what he was owed. Um, yeah, I think I, I think I thought for a little bit on opening. Uh, From deep pits of discontent, the hoary old landlord's eyes squinted at the world like it was half what he was owed. I think we're going to stick with half there. So you can see already the story is written in this very flowery language. And it gets worse um, throughout it. It is not a straightforward narrative. It is meant to be uh, written in uh, this very Baroque, uh, just um, a little bit over the top style. Not as over the top as some other stuff that I've done, but it is going to be um, a heavy amount of words coming at people. And this that's... Totally the intent of the story, because I don't actually intend to sell this. Uh, I just want to have a goof with it. All right. But so this is our first paragraph. I'm, I'm satisfied with that. It was a long and thirsty climb to Sky Skywork Keep. By the time the hunters reached the stronghold, the day was in deep decline. I like that. The sun slunk behind the gray storm. Uh, we don't need storm wall. Oh, look. Hi, I want to offer promotion of your channel. <laughs> this is one thing where promotion would be totally fucking useless, right? Um, the smaller the channel is, like, the ideal here is to have, like, under eight people watching this. Because more than that, I just can't get useful feedback from uh, those people. And, like, it really is just a small and intimate conversation with young Jira. <laughs> Jira says that that guy's legit. I suppose he is. with a W. All right. 
We're just taking out the trackless tundra remark. Reading that last night, it just seemed like too much to me. The sun slunk behind a gray wall of clouds. A biting wind... Uh, we can turn this in. The sun slunk behind, behind a gray wall of clouds, and a biting wind blew at their backs. All right, I like that. Okay. I wonder if I can... Mode, colorize, show viewer camera. That's annoying. The chat is in like a, so I just threw the chat on like a uh, old Chromebook and it's in like this blue on white thing that's like impossible to read. Uh, oh, here we go. I can just make the chats gigantic and now I can read them. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's, checking the chat is like uh, the way to be it for me. I, I want to see what they be chatting. All right. It was a long and... Th yeah, let's see. Bup, bup, bup. It was a long and thirsty climb to Skyward Keep. By the time the hunters reached the stronghold, the day was in deep decline. The sun slunk behind a gray wall of clouds, and a biting wind blew at their backs. As the troop trudged uphill towards the stronghold... We don't need towards the stronghold. Oh, we do need the Tours of Stronghold. As the troop trudged uphill towards the Stronghold, Flinzer had fantasized about the warm welcome that surely lay in wait. Sizzling venison. This would be... Um, we could almost put these in italics for emphasis, but... Uh, see if Logic was here. Yeah, we have to use had fantasize because we're leaping from here's a Moraney, and then here is us talking about getting to Moraney. So we have to, uh, I don't like to use this had whatever, but I have to. As the troop trudged uphill towards the stronghold, Linzer had fantasized about the warm welcome that surely lay in wait. Sizzling venison, spiced mead, roaring blaze, and comely company for Flinzer's schist of Fenwick, fabled finder of fugitives and his motley mob of manhunters. Uh, as you... <laughs> as you can see here, is getting pretty deep. Um, so this um, paragraph is where we're establishing that this is not like a serious, grim, dark, um, you know, elder gods and cutting off dicks type of story. <laughs> Faithful finder of fugitives. <laughs> I can get away with that. I swear to God. Um, now this is the this paragraph sets the tone for the piece. Is like we're gonna have goofy language throughout. Like the story is partly a comedy, um, and partly a tragedy. Um, but but some of the humorous tone should be coming in there. Like we're just gonna do some goofy stuff with the writing, um, because it's uh it's a little bit like a comedy of errors. I want to say this entire story. So uh, instead. Old man Moraney met them at the unfriendly edge of the drawbridge, flanked by armed guard. Let me just make sure that it doesn't say unfriendly edge in the paragraph above here. And I'll try not to zip all over there. Uh, da, 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 da. Nope, that's the only place we use it. Instead, old man Moraney met them at the unfriendly edge of the drawbridge, flanked by armed guard. Seven staid spearmen stood at his sides, and a brace of bowmen lined the ramparts at his back. More alliteration, all throughout. Mannerless Moraney kept Flinzer at Pike Point, even after they announced themselves and made no move to invite. Okay. Mannerless Moraney kept Flinzer at Pike Point, even after they announced themselves. He made no move to invite the tired troop inside for refreshment. How dare he? Flinzer had a bad feeling about this one. As he stared down the shaft of Moraney... <laughs> They're hard to read. Ugh. Oh. I, so I did another story like this um, called, uh, what was it, Aporia and Astoria, and a magazine um, that was going to do it as an audio book sent it back to me, and they're like, oh, you know, our reading guy says he's not going to do this because um, it's too hard to read because uh, it was full of the same kind of horseshit. Um, and I will tell you, it is harder to read this whole thing. <laughs> so 
As he stared down the shaft of Moraney's crusty mistrust, oh my God, that's grotesque, Linzer began to understand why the bounty on Three Wolf was so large and long-standing. Well, this whole sentence about Cox. It wasn't only the insulting lack of hospitality. A deadbeat gleam shone in the old landlord's eye. Sure as sunrise, the codger would contrive some cause to cheat them when the deed was done. <laughs> if it was spring, Linzer would have turned on his heel and headed home. If it were midsummer, his troop would have never trudged this. If it were midsummer, his troop would have never trudged this homely little fife on the backwater border between the evergreen bows of Adderville. Yeah, let me see. What was the name of this? Um... Uh, I'm trying to remember what I named this homely little fife. There we go. We can even keep the alliteration going here uh, while needing to break that up. If it was spring, Flinzer would have turned on his heel and headed home. If it were midsummer, his troop would have never trudged to this homely little fife. Skywork stood on the backwater border between the evergreen bows of Adder Vale and the icy waste north of northernmost Yarlist. But it was fall, the bitter end of a rough season. Nights grew longer, times got tighter. A hundred golden ducats could see Flinzer's troop through till spring, if they could only pry the... <laughs> a hundred golden ducats could see Flinzer's troop through till spring, if they could only pry the prize from this ornery old man's hands. Flinzer decided to dicker. If Moraney agreed easily, it would suggest he never intended to pay the purse. <laughs> so stupid. About this bounty. No, that's, that's not how, how would this character talk? So he's supposed to be a uh, friendly and approachable guy who is at the same, a grizzled veteran of many campaigns who has retained his sense of humor. About this bounty. No, that's, he doesn't have, like, the, the noble lilt or whatever. Let's build a voice uh, for this guy. About this bounty, why only a hundred ducats? Seems a bit light for a legend like Three Wolf. It won't divvy. There are, no, I'm not going to do that voice. <laughs> about this bounty, why only a hundred? So, uh, about this bounty. Um, He would say about that bounty. Let's talk about that bounty. Why only a hundred ducats? Seems a bit light for a legend like Three Wolf. Let's talk about that bounty. Why only a hundred ducats? Uh, see, let's fuck. We need to cut this out. So this dialogue does not sound like somebody would talk. He's terse. He's at the end of a bridge. There's a pike pointed at him. Moraney's crusty mistrust. Um, it doesn't work. Why only a hundred ducats? Isn't that a bit light for a legend like Three Wolf? It's a bit light for a legend like Three Wolf. Hundred won't divvy. Uh... Bounty's a bit light for a legend like Three Wolf. Plus, a hundred ducats won't divvy. There are seven of us. Flinzer motioned to his six companions, arrayed behind him in a silent semicircle. Okay, cool. So, this does a little work. Um, so, this is really a... Um, the paragraph is trying to um, shoehorn in that he has, uh, like, how many people. It's an excuse for me to talk about his companions and so forth. So we've made his uh, chat like much more terse here. Um, let's read through it again. Bounty's a bit light for a legend like Three Wolf. Plus, hundred ducats won't divvy. There are seven of us.
Bounty's a bit light for a legend like Three Wolf. Besides, a hundred ducats won't divvy. There are seven of us. Okay, and so that had a... Um... Oh, no, no, no. It was supposed to be a period all along. Um, so this period is basically... Because it, if this was like Flinzer said, we would need a comma there. But instead he's doing like... This... What the, I don't think he did that gesture. Um, but um, besides, a hundred ducats won't divvy. There are seven of us. Flinzer motioned to his six companions, arrayed behind him in a silent semicircle. Moraney squinted till his scabby lids were scarcely a hair apart. Have you seen old people where they have, like, scabby eyelids? Ugh. Oh, that's going to be us someday, big Jira. Fucking decrepit, liver-spotted, rotten teeth. I can't wait. <laughs> Moraney squinted till his scabby lids were scarcely a hair apart. Flinzer was the friendly face, with his inviting green eyes and tidy gray beard. His companions were a hard-bitten bunch. Their faces... Let me see. Oh, no, it happened to everybody before us, but it'll never happen to us. That's true. We could be dead and in hell by then. So, one can only hope. All right, let me... His companions were a hard-bitten bunch. Their faces were sun-scorched and wind-burned, scarred and soured down. <laughs> so we had down. Um, oh, no, 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 we need... Um, we need the word down there, even though it seems a little out of place. Their faces were sun-scorched and wind-burned, scarred and scoured down by the dust of countless leagues. I always use leagues when I'm writing fantasy shit because kilometers sound so stupid. You know, and like miles, nah, doesn't sound fancy enough for me. So I, I use leagues. <sighs> Still dumb. Uh, they wore fur, they wore fur lined deerskin duster. Okay, we can take out in the brush here. They wore fur lined deerskin dusters, dyed with drab blotches to break up their outlines. Beneath faded cowls, their eyes were cold and unforgiving. Flinzer's men had seen so many pleading, defeated fugitives, nothing could move them any more. The bounty hunters stared back at the vastly superior force with impeccable boredom. <laughs> no, this is terrible. The bounty hunters stared back at the superior force with the impeccable boredom of veterans. Old man Moraney concluded his inspection, sniffed, and spat into the moat. Uh, let me see. Three Wolf is no legend. He's a mere menace. Don't you fret about your divvy. <laughs> That's terrible. All right, let me... Uh... Yeah, Three Wolf is no legend. He's a mere menace. Don't you fret about your divvy. Why's that? Flinzer asked. Won't be seven of you left. Moraney flashed a gap tooth grin. Uh, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you need an exclamation point there because it's like the end to his little joke with himself. Won't be seven of you left. Moraney flashed a gap tooth grin. Flinzer pressed his tongue against the roof of his mouth to bottle his temper. I don't actually do that, but I assume somebody does that. Like, mm. <laughs> makes a good face, actually. <laughs> Flinzer pressed his tongue against the roof of his mouth to bottle his temper. A battle on this bridge would go badly. And besides, he sorely needed this score. More of the, the continual alliteration that will bedevil this entire story. I'm unwilling to take it out. Oh. Moraney's spearman eyed Flinzer furiously, set to skewer him if he tried something stupid. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I, I so set was like my how I use ready there. Moraney's spearman eyed Flinzer hard. <laughs> Are they hungry for the order to skewer him? Moraney's spearman eyed Flinzer, eager for the order to skewer him. I like that. That was a little bit better. Uh, so we were trying to continue on our uh, flood of alliteration, but there it was, it was bogging down the story a little bit. Flinzer took ten deep breaths. Oh, hold on, let's read through and see what we've done. Won't be seven of you left, Moraney flashed a gap tooth grin. Flinzer pressed his tongue against the roof of his mouth to bottle his temper. A battle on this bridge would go badly, and besides, he sorely needed this score. Moraney's spearman eyed Flinzer, eager for the order to skewer him. All right, um, so it's dawning on me now that the reader has, they have no idea where this is taking place. We need like two lines establishing that, um, let's see. Yeah. Let's see. No. Uh, let's see. Skyward Keep was a. <sighs> Let me see. Did I tap into this in the town that already? Already, you can see. Oh wait, Bjorn is typing his uh what do we got here? Am of Doom type beat produced by Clumsy Lulls just sent in to me here. Thank you, Clumsy Lulls. Yeah, you gotta type the um the shit into the Twitch chat um to get any points, Bjorn. Like Oh yeah, he doesn't get points for that. I already did. Um
see. No, 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 let's not do that. to move this elsewhere. All right, so this is what we added. The sun slunk behind a gray wall of clouds and a biting wind blew at their backs. Skywork Keep was a narrow fortress of heavy granite slabs wedged at the path. Uh, let's see. wedged between two unscalable peaks. Um, this comes into play all the way at the end of the story. Um, so one of the, the best part about editing is working stuff in that will make sense later on. Um, so this that, that becomes uh, much better. Skywork Keep was a narrow fortress of heavy granite slabs wedged between two unscalable peaks. It was good ground. A garrison of 50 could hold here against a host of hundreds.
as the troop trudged uphill towards the stronghold. Yeah, all right, that's cool. So now we have just an idea of what we're looking at. Um, that, that there's a drawbridge, that the um, the keep is made out of ugly, ugly green, gray blocks, and that there are two unscalable peaks. Um, let me see. <laughs> Between two icy, unscalable peaks. Let's let's make them icy. Um, so it's even harder to fucking scale them later on. <sighs> this is um, also definitely how editing goes. I used to have a timer that I would start when I was doing this whole thing. Um, but I guess I just started at 5 o'clock. Where was the first chat on this motherfucker? Um, all right, so the stream really starts when Jira joins the fray at 5.02. <sighs> Not making good progress here. We've done like one page out of 70. All right. Um, let's see. Maybe seven of you left. And then tomorrow morning, we'll just read through the entire chapter that we've done. So we have like a little bit of recursion going on. So I'll be able to sleep on some of the changes that we've made. I do want to get through this chapter today. Um, I think there are like 13 or 14 chapters in this guy. I could be wrong. Um, so some of them are going to be, uh, oh, here, so here's where, um, we like plonk people onto this bridge and already I'm going into a flashback. I don't recommend doing this. Um, learn from my mistakes. <laughs> I should really be thrusting people into the action here, but I'm not gonna. Blinzer took 10 deep breaths. He could feel this bounty blooming into a full blown fiasco, just like the last one and the one before. And the one before that. In ten terse seconds, the whole rotten year came flooding back. In a good year, Flinzer's flock of manhunters might clear four or five bounties before fall. Their aim was always the same. Ned enough near do wells to live like kings all winter, somewhere that never saw snow. Thus far, the year... All right, so it should be this year. And this is... This is quite a sentence that we've got going on here. In a good year, Flinzer's flock of man... Oh, we don't need manhunters there. In a good year, Flinzer's troop might clear four or five bounties before fall. Their aim was always the same. Ned enough near do wells to live like kings all winter, somewhere that never saw snow. I like that. It's, it's a um, wordy, but... Also, I don't care. Um, let's see. Where am I? Where are you? Oh, I still have this one. Let's see. Nice. Okay. I forgot. There's one other place that I spam this every day to get the... This is like a Twitch writing Discord that... Um, oh, yeah, Bjorn. Sorry. Yeah, you get screwed. Also, um, I think I edited it before I saw your thing. So... I wonder if I could pipe IRC chat into this and just have... If I start doing this every day, I'll create an IRC channel and I'll bridge it into this somehow. Uh, maybe through like a Discord bot or something like that. Oh, wait, wait, no, no, he might be right. He says, slunk behind, behind the gray. Oh, yeah, no, I had already changed it. <laughs> All right, um, let me get this a little bit more here. Uh, stream chat. There we go. I'll be happy when this is like rolling again. You know, starting like any exercise regime or practice regime or whatever, that first like seven days, it just sucks. And you just got to plow through it. Like this is going to suck for seven days. 
And then I think if I can get back into doing it regularly, uh, I'll feel better because I do enjoy this. Um, I just make less progress than I normally would because I'm so easily distracted. I should do some kind of meditation or take ADD meds or drink less of this extremely powerful coffee. Um, another thing that I was thinking about too, <laughs> as I'm getting distracted, was it would be cool if I made the stream very cozy. Like if I showed myself like in the morning, like uh, and like brewing coffee, my dick hanging out, and uh, just like trudging into the thing. I could even do normally. I take a uh, brief stroll before I go out and write um, to clear my head and uh, put up graffiti, and I could live stream that part too. So the sky's the limit. Um, but, uh, yeah, I could potentially get something like that going on. Because I can use Streamlabs, um, with this stream. I just can't do it with, um, <laughs> the other stream. Uh -oh. But, yeah, like, I could, I could really have it, like, be, like, a very comfy stream where you just ASMR making coffee, dead-eyed to the world. Um, shame I don't have a dog or something to act as co-host. We'll see what I can do. Um, Flinzer took ten deep breaths. He could feel this bounty blooming into a full-blown fiasco, just like the last one. And the... And the one before. And the one before that. In ten terse seconds, the whole rotten year came flooding back. In a good year, Flinzer's troop might clear four or five bounties before fall. Their aim was always the same. Not enough near... Okay. Thus far, this year was a complete flop. First, Flinzer lost an enormous bounty to Fat Tom's troop. The marks were the Boodle Brothers, a pair of witless alchemists who'd stupidly outraged the coin king of Camaria. For centuries, the Camarian coinfish was the most trusted tender upon the ark. <laughs> uh, for centuries, the Camarian coinfish was the most trusted tender upon the ark. Mark is capital. The swordfish and blazon coins were long thought to be too intricate to counterfeit. Okay. For centuries, the Chimerian coinfish was the most trusted tender upon the Ark. The swordfish and blazon coins were long to believe, were long believed to be too intricate to counterfeit. Coinfish were so trusted they bore no bites. So this was, <laughs> you remember, way back in the day. Uh, yeah, the, the the legacy of people doing shit so that coins couldn't be counterfeited, like the ridge around coins, is just there. So that people didn't like shave off a little bit of gold, um, which happened to like the, uh, yeah, it's just, it's a lot um, of stuff that people would do to try and cheat people with coins. It's, uh, it's like a whole fascinating thing. But we don't get into it. Then the bold Boodle brothers managed to mint their own coinfish with a clever centrifugal mold. Then the Boodle brothers managed to mint their own coinfish with a clever centrifugal mold. Their device deposited a thin layer of gold onto slugs of leaded copper. Um, actually, let's find out. Um, yeah, I think I took everything that could identify me off of this computer. So, and then this guy moves like over here. Cool. And then let's make it a little tidier on the screen. This is good. And then let's just shove you over here. Hey, that's about right. And then this will stay this way forevermore, hopefully. Got <laughs> to turn off color shift. Uh, is tin leaded copper? Oh, okay. Is a metal alloy. A small amount of lead makes the copper easier to machine. Alloys with a larger amount of lead are used for bearings. Brass and bonds alloys of copper may have lead added. Leaded copper alloys. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that... Like, I wasn't thinking of um, an alloy that had a common name. Um, 
So like you wouldn't want to say tin or something like that, um, leaded copper instead of tin. But I think I already had that thought and researched it. Okay. Then the bold boot. <laughs> uh, I don't think we need bold there. Let's see. I don't like then there. Until the Boodle brothers managed to mint their own coinfish with a clever centrifugal mold. I, I, I don't know if I can just use until there. Um, does that read right? Um, so we had it as then, comma. Coinfish was tr so. Tr Let's see. Yeah, I, I don't think we need like a time displacer there at all. I think we're good with just that. I think I'm also going to move my chat screen so it's there, so it looks like I'm paying attention to that instead of just doing this like, ah, 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 ah. Because the ergonomics of how I have this set now are not good, but I can change it up. The Boodle Brothers managed to mint their own coinfish with a clever centrifugal mold. The device deposited a thin layer of gold the device deposited a thin layer of gold onto slugs of leaded copper. For a jubilant year, and this is actually something you could potentially do. Um, like, uh, it, it'd take like a little work to make it happen, but um, uh, centrifugal molds are actually something you could potentially use for this. Um, let's see. For a jubilant year, er, for a jubilant year, the pair lived like princes. Inevitably, greed got the better of them. Okay, and so inevitably, greed got the better of them. The brothers brewed a batch of bunk bullion with a skin too thin, and the shine wore off. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's awful. The brothers brewed a batch of bunk bullion with a skin too thin, and the shine wore off. Apoplectic, the coin king announced the biggest bounty the lake had ever seen. Uh, let's just do the arc. Apoplectic, and then the coin king announced the biggest bounty the arc had ever seen. Flinzer's troop was hot on the trail, perhaps just a day away from payday. Then, the fugitive forgers made a terrible error and shacked up with one of Fat Tom's seven sisters. The trap sprang and the fat lady sang. Heartbroken, Flinzer had. Then the fugitive forgers made a terrible error and shacked up with one of Fat Tom's seven sisters. The trap sprang and the fat lady sang. Flinzer lost the race. He had to stand. Uh, yeah. He had to stand among the howling crowd and Mar let's um. Let's learn the spelling Flinzer because it's going to be all throughout the story. Um, the trap sprang and the fat lady sang. Flinzer lost the race. He had to stand among the howling crowd in Marlin Square and watch Fat Tom collect a fatter purse from the bejeweled hand of the Coin King himself. What a sentence. Um. Yeah, I, I don't think you can break that anywhere. He had to stand among the howling crowd in Marlin Square and watch the... Uh, 
he had to, Stan. So we could cut out, had to. He stood among the howling crowd in Marlin Square and watched Fat Tom collect a fatter purse from the bejeweled hand of the coin king himself. Nah, like I had to. Okay. So bejeweled hand is like the the spot where we could cut this potentially. Uh, but I like the bejeweled hand of the coin king because it reminds me of the Simpsons episode where uh, Homer was 100 feet tall and uh, covered in solid gold. This, this is one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> hey, Lenny, notice anything different about me? <laughs> Let's see. Um... They even let Tom pull the guillotine lever and behead both Boodle brothers. The forger's skulls were then gilded via their own method. I don't need that. <laughs> Look at this. The forger's skulls were gilded via their own method. Those gruesome golden gourds hung from the rostrum of the royal marlin at the main palace gate. Lance through the sockets. Alas. Uh, alas should be... Alas. The boodle beat was especially bad because Flinzer had skate, snaked two scores from Fat Tom the year before. Fat Tom was due. There was nothing Flinzer could do. So the rostrum of a marlin is like that big pointy nose spike. Um, swordfish are the same and sawfish. They call it a rostrum. Um, and so here it's like they are Lance through their eye sockets, um, both of them and, uh, hung over the main palace gate. This shows up, I think in the Rapazaurus somewhere, but it might get edited out because it's in the second half. Those gruesome golden gourds hung from the rostrum of the Royal Marlin at the main. Above the main palace gate, Lance through the sockets. Alas. The boodle beat was especially bad because Flinzer had snaked two scores from Fat Tom the year before. Fat Tom was due, and there was nothing. We don't need the Fat Tom was due. Let's just cut that out. It doesn't really add anything. I like that. Um, it's simpler there. He was due. So that works for me a little bit better. So let's see. Still smarting, Flinzer's flock next chased after a disgraced retainer from the inner circle of Terhaljitan. <sighs> let's read that again. Still smarting, Flinzer's flock next chased... We don't need next. Still smarting, Flinzer's flock chased after a disgraced retainer from the inner circle of Terhaljitan. The Renegade was a lucrative prospect. I like Renegade uh, there, which is a real word. I didn't just make that shit up. The Renegade was a lucrative prospect. The Mad Prince paid lavish ransoms for the return. The Mad Prince reliably paid lavish ransoms for the return of his wayward pets. Flinzer's flock called it, caught the Terraljitani's trail and drove him into the labyrinthine can- Oh, no, this is no good. Flinzer's flock caught the Terraljitani's tail and pursued for days. They drove him into the labyrinthine canyons that led to the chalk cliffs of southernmost Kaz. There, they cornered him again- As dusk fell, they cornered him against a crumbling precipice. The bounty seemed like a mortal lock. It was not. 
The terrified Terhajitani held himself hostage. It was a conundrum. The cliff was too cracked to send a man after him. It seemed any second it might slough into the raging water below. Um... The cliff was too cracked. All right. Uh, here, we've made some changes. So let's go back over uh, this paragraph here. The mad prince reliably paid lavish sons for the return of his wayward pets. Flinzer's flock caught the Taraljitani's trail and pursued for days. They drove him. They drove the mark into the labyrinthine canyons that led to the chalk cliffs of southernmost Kaz. They drove the mark into the labyrinthine canyons between the chalk cliffs of southernmost Kaz. As dusk fell, they cornered him against a crumbling precipice. The bounty seemed like a mortal lock. Uh, let's see. I don't like canyons there. Canyons, because ultimately they have this guy cornered against a fjord. Um... What do they have? Uh, they're what would we call like um like a I guess canyons is kind of where we would get to, but we're looking for yeah yeah I like that better. They drove the mark into the labyrinthine badlands between the chalk cliffs of southernmost Kaz. into the labyrinthine badlands before the chalk cliffs of southernmost Kaz. As dusk fell, they they cornered him. Oh, cool. Yes, yeah, so I have D&D &D on, on my machine until 6 a.m. Does it just turn on at 6 a.m.? I don't, I don't know when the fuck. Oh, no, no, no. My whole, my whole life restarts at 6 a.m. every day. Oh, that's why. Uh, they drove the mark into the labyrinthine badlands before the chalk cliffs of southernmost Kaz. As dust fell, they cornered. As dust fell, they cornered the fugitive against a crumbling precipice. The bounty seemed like a mortal lock. All right, so this is better. I like I like this improvement. Still smarting, Flinzer's flock chased after a disgraced retainer from the inner circle of Terhaljitan. The renegade was a lucrative prospect. The mad prince reliably paid. Um, I guess it's, it's assumed that, I. Still smarting, Flinzer's flock chased after a disgraced retainer from the inner circle of the mad prince of Terhaljitan. The renegade was a lucrative prospect. The prince reliably paid lavish ransoms for the return of his wayward pets. Flinzer's flock caught the Terhaljitani's trail and pursued for days. They drove the mark into the labyrinthine badlands before the chalk cliffs of southernmost Kaz. So we use easternmost and northernmost and uh, northeasternmost and stuff like that here. Um, normally I would cut this out, but uh, let's leave it in for right now. I think we're going to do a second pass on this edit, just because I'm so fucking rusty. Also, if Logic shows up again, um, he's like the comic king there. So, yeah, without Logic and Spathy, I'm like at a, a tenth of my powers here. So, <laughs> I shouldn't have run them off. All right. Let me see. Southernmost cat. Oh, oh, fucking. Hold on. Let me turn the screensaver off on this machine. See, how do they have. Uh, never. I don't want 
my screensaver on this guy. How do they have, like, all this technology, like, there's a webcam pointed at you all the time, and still the machine falls asleep. Like, aren't they recording you jacking off and sending it to the NSA anyway? I mean, come on, guys. Come on, guys. Um, anyhow. The bounty seemed like a mortal lock. Oh, shit, it's Catalyst. Oh, it's been a long time, buddy. Um, yeah, we started the editing stream once again. This is Catalyst from the JRE Discord. All up in this. Catalyst, I have made it through six pages so far, and I'm pretty sure that two of them were like the title page. <laughs> this is a story about um, bounty hunters going after a legendary fugitive, and we're just going through the flashback into how they got into, you know, record scratch. Stop right there. I bet you're wondering how I got into this mess. Exactly that fucking tired canard. <laughs> this is just teething, bro. No, I'm, I'm going to get through it. Like, I'm um, very, it's going to be a good story when we're done with it here. Um, but I will tell you that trying, like, one, the story will not be super successful just because I'm uh, insisting on putting in all this goofy language there. Um, and then, two, it's not the right length to really sell or anything like that, but I might be able to make, like, a neat audiobook or something out of it. So, it sounds legit. I'm glad you're back at it. Yeah. Uh, this is all thanks to Logic uh, being an alcoholic and me being a junior alcoholic and the two of us um, having to take the month of May and dry out. So we're both trying to get our lives in in, uh, in order right there. All right, if you, um, if you stay until the end of this editing stream, I will hold up uh, the new effects pedals that I have. <laughs> uh, no, get some edits in there because at this point, even one or two edits um, and you will wind up in the credits of this book. Because I think only about um, five or ten people will tune in total for this edit. Uh, let's go here. The bounty seemed like a mortal lock. Oh, uh, here. Actually, I was here. They drove the mark into the labyrinthine badlands before the chalk cliffs of southernmost Kaz. As dusk fell, they cornered the fugitive against a crumbling precipice. The bounty seemed like a mortal lock. It was not. The terrified Terhazitani held himself hostage. It was a conundrum. The cliff was too cracked to send a man after him. All right, so here. I want to say crack rocks, but I'm not allowed to because of the whites. Um, it was not. The terrified Tarazitani held himself hostage. It was a conundrum. The bounty hunters were caught in a conundrum. The cliff was too cracked to send a man after him. Any second, the whole precipice might slough off and fall a thousand feet down into the region. Mm, precipice is not what I want. Yeah. Oh shit. Uh fan fictioner walks into chat, face plants the follow button and rebounds into the lurk button, disabling their keyboard process in uh, oh lord. <laughs> disabling their keyboard input in the progress 
the lurk silently. Well, I much appreciate the lurking. Yeah, we do uh, fantasy and science fiction here. There's no fan fiction, uh, though. I'm too arrogant uh, to write in anybody else's realm. You hear that, Brandon Sanderson? Um, let me see there. Any second, the bluff might slough off entirely. <laughs> I like I like the way the slough off entirely sounds. This is it. Really, is meant to be um, very lyrical uh, with the nonsense here. At his back was a thousand foot drop into a frothing fjord. Oh, <laughs> oh, terrible. Flinzer tried to talk the Terhaljitani down, but whatever fate awaited the fugitive must have been dark indeed. After two fruitless hours, the mark took his chance with the sea and leaped. Um. Flinzer tried to talk the Charaljitani. <laughs> did we say terrified Charaljitani? Yeah, we did. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's leave it terrified there. Flinzer tried to talk the Charajatani down, but whatever fate awaited the fugitive must have been dark indeed. After two fruitless hours, the mark took his chances and leapt off the cliff. Nothing without wings could possibly survive the fall. Nothing without wings could have possibly survived that fall. There we go. He couldn't have possibly survived, but again, Flinzer was denied. No body, no bounty. He stared down into the churning drink and despaired. Since boyhood, Flinter... Let's see. Flinzer tried to talk the Taraljitani down, but whatever fate awaited the fugitive must have been dark indeed. After two fruitless hours, the mark took his chances and leapt off the cliff. And leapt off the cliff. He couldn't have possibly survived. The Taraljitani couldn't have possibly survived. The Taraljitani couldn't have survived, but again, Flinzer was denied. No body, no bounty. He stared down into the churning drink and despaired. Flinzer hated any water he could not see the bottom of. Uh, so this is this is an attempt to uh, set up a callback for later in the story, but it's clumsy here. Let's see. Hmm. 
Yeah, let's just cut it. All right. So we go we go further into Remember that we started this whole deal with them standing at a drawbridge. And then we're going into like this very deep flashback of what's happening here. Um which works okay in cinema, not so much in uh short stories, but um um I like um talking about all the bounties that they fucked up. So we could consider if this is the right structure to do this. Like you could rewrite this as him um, like in a tavern where he's telling somebody the story of all this stuff fucking up. Because it is kind of info dumpy here at the start. Um, fantasy readers are generally more forgiving of that kind of nonsense uh, than others. Yeah, yeah, like whatever flashbook, water was deep enough to where you couldn't see the bottom. It just, yeah, I'm, I'm just cutting it because it doesn't, um, it doesn't really fit there. I do want to have that flashback. Um, let's just... Uh, yeah, 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 let's see. Because uh, it is good to, like, get into this emotion of the uh, the character. Uh, because l later in the story, like, water will become a factor. So I do want to establish here... Uh, The gurgling roar below, but <laughs> like gurgling roar. All right, so here we can start. Uh, oh, hold on. Let me um, block off my screen so I don't uh, dox myself. Okay. Well, save. And this is going to be... All right, cool. Oh, that big Rapazaurus. Um, all right, so we're going to do... So Catalyst gets one point here. Uh, because... And let me... Let's make this big enough that we can see. 72 points. And then fuck Helvetica. Let's go for... I don't have any good fonts on this machine. Gay. Do American typewriter. So Catalyst is sitting pretty. He is winning this with one. Uh, just a reminder, like if you are participating in this edit, um, uh, you will wind up in the credits of the book on the uh, copyright page. So it's, it's not for nothing. Like I count all these edits. I like, I, okay. The gurgling roar made Flinzer's shoulders hunch. He hated any water he couldn't see the bottom of. All right, I like that. All right, and then we can we can get into later. No, thank you. This shit is boring as hell when it's on my own. Like I I only edit with um, a pack of nerds uh, calling me gay in the comments. Um, it was the only thing that can hold my interest through this process. <laughs> Is wait until uh, my admirers find out that this is going on. Um, I'll be literally like every other line. Somebody will be accusing me of 
uh, being a pedophile and part of the science fiction writing cabal of walnut sauce drinking Democrats or whatever. It's... <sighs> <laughs> Oh, the, the ter all right. So let's let's begin. The Terhaljitani folly was unequ it was an un <laughs> look at this sentence. The Terhaljitani the Terhaljitani folly was an unequivocally dismal start to the summer. Ten men had the good sense to desert after the catastrophe. Oh no, <laughs> that was awful. Ten men had the good sense to depart desert after the catastrophe and cast. So you could, you can't do that pun with some made up fantasy city name that nobody knows. Sorry, it just doesn't work. Um, ten men had the good sense to desert. Okay, and it's the right dessert, not the delicious dessert. After the catastrophe and cast, Flinzer knew more. Flinzer knew more men were sure to follow if he didn't right the ship right quick. To wit, he doubled down and bet his entire season on one big score. Okay, so this is another thing that really, if we're like writing clearly and concisely, we shouldn't do this little, like, Flinzer knew more men were sure to follow if he didn't right the ship right quick. To wit, he doubled down, yeah, no, like it's like, but um, because so much of my writing is, um, doing this kind of goofy shit to keep me entertained um, is in there. <laughs> uh, any real editor would cut that shit out in a heartbeat. They'd just be like, no, Zach, no, 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 fucking write a story. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm not doing this for a living, so I can just have fun. Uh, all right, so I like that, that thing. Frantic Flinzers signed a contract to stalk the runaway prince of Catterwall Castle. Across, well, look at this sentence. No, I don't think Frantic Flinzer works there. Flinzer swiftly signed a contract to stalk the runaway prince of Catterwall Castle across the numberless Everbogian Isles. You know, what a Peter Bogosian. This one's for you. Um, even at the outset, it was no easy prospect. The Everbog was forever fog with mucilaginous gloom, adrift with noxious miasma, and beset by sun-swallowing swarms of swarms of insatiable insects. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to use mucilaginous. Am I even saying that right? Here. I think I think it's mucilaginous. It might be like a long A. We'll find out. Yeah, I had it right. Okay. So mucilaginous is mucus like. Um, uh, having a viscous or gelatinous consistency. It's a useful word. Um, the Everbog was forever fog with mucilaginous groom, gloom, adrift with noxious miasma, and beset by sun-swallowing swarms of insatiable insects. So this is like three SAT words in a row. Um, don't do that. <laughs> the locals were uncommonly untrustworthy and the runaway regal was as slippery a mark as any man Flinzer had ever followed. No matter how hard they hoofed it, the hunters were always a day behind. After three months of tribulation, the quagmire dragnet verged on outright disaster. <laughs> it's a fire rap. It is. So this is, uh, it is meant to be, like, it's meant to, like, have a little of that, like, epic Odyssean. We're trying to have some rhythm to it. Um, without going into like iambic pentameter or some nonsense like that. After three months of tribulation, the quagmire dragnet verged on outright disaster. The only time they'd only the time they'd already wasted fueled their pointless pursuit. When all seemed lost, a stroke of luck struck. Oh, I don't know if you can say a stroke of luck struck. Yeah, that's better. When all seemed lost, they were struck by a stroke of luck. That's also gay, but um, less so. I do like the idea of like a limerick rhythm 
that's there. Um, when we throughout the rewrite, we might even make it so, because the the narration is meant to be in Flinzer's voice. Um, so I wouldn't go like so deep as to like make him a bard, um, but we could have him at some point um, telling some tales or like working rhymes and his like normal conversation and so forth. Because this is the whole story is meant to be his POV, but it's not like a, a completely direct POV, right? We're not seeing the story through his eyes. There is um, the pretext of a narrator um, a little bit, which would be me, but um, only the time they'd already wasted fueled their pointless pursuit. When all seemed lost, they were struck by a stroke of luck. When all seemed lost, luck struck. That's better. Let me stick out the stroke. The quarry, their quarry, <laughs> their quarry tarried a touch too long in the boudoir of a swamp witch. Flinzer's squad sprang on him as he stumbled out of the shack, still buttoning his pants. Oh, I like that. The quarry, <laughs> I'm pronouncing it as quarry because Terry, uh, their quarry, uh, I, yeah, like I can't. Their quarry tarried. Oh, that doesn't work actually. Um, hold on. Yeah. Their quarry. Yeah, so. Wait, 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 wait. Two meanings of two. Oh, the other, there's another meaning, though. That's who you're going after. Yeah. Let's just make sure that we're using the same quarry. Oh, so yeah, quarry like quarry is like going after stone, and um, an animal caught or hunted for food, a person who is the aim of an attack. Uh, so quarry tarried, yeah, they because Terry has that hard a. Yeah. Their quarry lingered a touch too long. and So we lose the alliteration of tarried, but, and Terry, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't track right. Their quarry tarried a touch too long in the boudoir of a swamp witch. Their quarry lingered a touch too long. Now it's, I'm overthinking it. But yeah, it's, it's hard to say that. Their quarry tarried a touch too long in the boudoir of a swamp witch. Linzer's squad sprang on him. Linzer's squad sprang as he stumbled out of the shack. Um, <laughs> Linzer's squad sprang as the target stumbled out of the shack, still buttoning his pants. At last, they'd captured the elusive fugitive. Alas, they'd been hoodwinked. Unknown to Flinzer, his princely prisoner was merely a sly servant with a passing resemblance. Meanwhile, the true heir was holed up inside Cutterwall, plotting in the guise of a penitent monk. By the time Flinzer hauled the so-called prince back to Cutterwall, the coup was the coup was complete. The former king swung. Okay, let's let's back it up a little bit because this is this is where it gets intense. Unknown to Flinzer, his princely prisoner was merely a sly servant with a passing resemblance. Meanwhile, the true heir was holed up inside Cotterwall, plotting in the guise of a penitent monk. By the time Flinzer hauled the so-called prince back to Cotterwall, the coup was complete. The former king swung from the gallows. The surreptitious prince, newly crowned as king of Cotterwall, proposed Flinzer's flock ought to dangle alongside the old monarch. The surreptitious prince was newly crowned as king of Cotterwall. He proposed Flinzer's flock ought to dangle on, alongside the old monarch and keep him company. In abject abasement, Flinzer begged before the entire court on all fours like a dog. The patricidal prince laughed hard and long. <laughs> Tarried to their quarry? Uh... 
it keeps turning into the word query, uh, but it's because I have to I use the word query all the time because that's what you do to agents and editors that tell you to fuck off. Um, let's see. No, I do not want to install these updates OS X. Fuck. I don't even want Remind Me Tomorrow. I just want like OS X to have like the fuck off forever. I'm not updating. Because every update makes the system worse. It's not as bad as Windows, but it's, it's still bad. Um, let's see. The former king swung from the gallows. The surreptitious prince was newly crowned as king of Cotterwall. He proposed Flinzer's flock ought to dangle alongside the old monarch and keep him company. In abject abasement, Flinzer begged before the entire court on all fours like a dog. The patricidal prince laughed long and hard at the pathetic display. Flinzer convinced them to commute their executions to mere banishment. I like commute their executions. Uh, in abject abasement, Flinzer begged before the entire court. Um, yeah, but... <laughs> and Flinzer is really getting, he's having a rough year here. In abject abasement, Flinzer crawled before the court on all fours like a dog and begged for mercy. The patricidal prince laughed long and hard at the pathetic display. <laughs> This is better, yeah. In abject abasement, Flinzer crawled before the court on all fours like a dog and begged for mercy. The patricidal prince laughed himself into a fit and was convinced to commute their executions to mere banishment. After a narrow escape from the Everbog, a mass exodus began. From a tube of... From his previous troop of 22, the six men who stood behind Flinzer were all that remained. Some summer. Okay, so this is a flashback that is going on. The flashback ends here, right? And we acknowledge uh, the flashback in the next uh, chapter. So we really go on for three pages about how, um, <laughs> how bad he has it, right? So page five, page three. Uh... A three-page flashback at the very start of your story. Don't, don't, I, I guess this whole stream is just like, don't do what I'm doing. Um, I'm doing it because I'm Bane, basically. And I think I can get away with this, but I probably can't, to tell you the truth. Um, like, I, I don't assume that the story will be particularly successful, but <laughs> it's also funny to me. Uh I wonder how many like artists throughout history were are just completely forgotten because they couldn't stop from trolling themselves. Like I know the right thing to do here. Oh yeah, it's uh Hose X. Hey, who is this character? Hose. Um. All right. Well, shout outs to Hose X. Yeah, we're editing a uh, short story here. I guess it's about novelette length. It's about um sixteen hundred words, and this is about a troop of bounty hunters that are going after a legendary bounty. In the frozen north, it is a winter tale. 
Uh, how am I, brother? I'm doing spectacular. Actually, this is the start of a whole month where I'm going to try not to drink, try not to abuse myself, and try to do an editing stream every single day or a writing stream once I run out of stuff to edit because I just have this short story, really. Whew, the, the Rapazor is going to be tough to stream. Anyhow, um, yeah, I do this all the time. Um, you can check out, if we have not met, is that it's not Haas from PP4L, uh, so I'm just trying to remember if you were on previous streams. I uh, wonder which genre. This is, um, I would call it um, low fantasy for the most part. Um, there's not like a lot of magic and uh, there's not a lot of, there's a little bit, but not a tremendous amount of uh, reality breaking stuff here. Um, so there's no elves, there's no goblins or anything like that. Um, it's kind of a low fantasy. Um, I would peg it like around uh, Joe Abercrombie's work. Like if you've read the First Law type series. Oh, first time here. Well, welcome. We do this every day. Um, and this is an editing stream. We're trying to make this work better. Um, the way that we do it is by reading through it and looking through it. If you catch an error, like a comma or propose an idea or something like that, and I accept it, I will put you on the, let's see. I will put you on this sheet. You can see one person has one point. All those people will get thanked in the acknowledgments page of the book. This is a short story. It's going to be about this big when it's done, right? Just like this little slender tome type thing here. You can see, uh, what is this? Let me grab these up. So here's one of my previous books. It's called Zeros. Ooh, a shiny hardcover. Um, and this one, if you go into it, um, you can see, here's the page. But on this page, it says, special thanks to the squadron. And you can see all the people that did edits on the previous book. And uh, number one, Logic had 122 edits. I think we spent about three months editing this book. Um, let me see. Honest question, how are you streaming from a Mac? Uh, well, this Mac is just doing an HDMI out um, onto uh, another machine that's capturing it. Like if you could see the studio here, um, you would be aghast at um, how many synthesizers and I mean, hold on, let me just let's, yeah, this is just floating around here. This Zen delay that I've been messing with here. What else is readily at hand that is stupid for me to have here? Here's a DD500 that I just got floating over here. A router. Uh, yeah, just I um, live my life surrounded by gear. I would do my best to find errors. So anyhow, another thing that we did is we sent out these Zeros Project patches. This is an embroidered patch that I sent to everybody that worked on the book. Soon, we will be editing, soon by like a year from now, we will be editing a epic um, fantasy book about a dungeon delve. And there I will come up with more swag and everything for everybody. That book is called Rapazorus, right there. Uh, I write some poems and sometimes stories. Too. Well, good. Poems are fucking hard to write, man. Um, I have a lot of respect for anybody that tries to make a living off of that because, Lord, it ain't easy. What is, what is, what's over here? That's oh, it's fucking cords and stuff. All right, I hate having stuff on the bottom of the screen. Let's get to it. I do want to finish this chapter, but yeah, look, it's the whole thing. Um, I guess I have a Patreon and all. I don't really do anything with that one. Um, but you can actually go to my YouTube and like the entire audiobook for this one is there. Um, and then I put stickers all over the place, like these uh, stickers. If you're in New York or Montreal or Philadelphia or San Francisco, you might see these stickers everywhere. And if you scan the uh, QR code, you get the book for free. So, yeah, I'm into, I'm into graffiti. I think it's fun. I just like to damage our civic infrastructure as much as I possibly can. So I'm summer. Okay, so this ends the flashback. So just to recount so far, all that's happened here is the troop of bounty hunters has trudged up to this bridge to talk to the guy who was offering the bounty on a legendary figure called Three Wolf. And then um, they are greeted by spearmen who are like holding them at spear point. And this, uh, the Lord of Skywork Keep, Old Man Moraney, is dickering with them. And Flinzer has just had a flashback to all three bounties that he fucked up this year. Um, I'm not old enough for what? For graffiti? Oh shit. Anybody's old enough for graffiti at all times. Hmm. It's great. Um, I don't professionally write poems for a living, but for fun, nobody on earth 
writes poems for a living. It's not possible. Your family has to be rich, um, or you have to have like an en- enormous endowment, not from the National um, uh, Institute of the Arts, but like an actual enormous endowment, and that's how you make your living as a gigolo. So, um, I wonder, what's your opinion? Do you like other world fantasy works? Um, do you mean like portal fantasies, um, where like um, like somebody from this world goes through a portal? And then they have to use like what they know of this world in the other world, which is might be what you're talking about there. Um, another one, uh, other world is like the it's a completely different Earth from whatever. Hose is thirteen, Portal, Isekai, Tensai, and stuff. Generally, no. Um, th- those can be fun, but to me, um, it's not necessarily a satisfying rubric. I do like uh, the narrative like of a guy cryogenically frozen and has to like deal with the future, like a Demolition Man style thing. Um, Isekai is against the Quran. <laughs> Everything's against the Quran. They don't let you do anything cool. I am 13. All right, well, Hose, I um, will try not to say anything too outrageous, but when I was 13, I was a complete devil. Whoa. Um, yeah, it was just... An incorrigible little monster. So I assume that you are too. <sighs> From his previous troop of 22, the six men who stood behind Flinzer were all that remained. Some summer. Okay. So we burst out of our flashback there, and now we are back, snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. The spearmen fidgeted against the weight of their arms. Flashing back to the drawbridge, Flinzer realized he must have been adrift for a minute or more. He could only hope it came across as a dramatic stare down. <laughs> Flinzer soaked it all in and let him languish. The old men knew a thing or two about losing the thread. So this is where I'm giving my readers some credit. I'm acknowledging, like, hey, we just did this really long flashback, and um, I'm justifying it with the fact that these are two old guys, and they're staring at each other, and they both lost the thread. Um, Mystery in it with twists, then it's the best. <laughs> I don't ever write mysteries. I don't ever write mysteries or horror. Um, I have worked on some westerns. Uh, but yeah, detective... I'm, I'd like to do a detective mystery at some point. Just so I can get all... Maybe I'll do that... I'm going to do that in Brooklyn. So, I... Um, because I do like a lot of graffiti. And a lot of the graffiti that I put up is on magnets. Uh, and it's like attached to street signs. I've been working on a new design for a QR code that has LED lights that are powered by like a solar panel. Um, so I want to take, I'm going to write a story, like a detective story about finding money in Brooklyn. And I want to post it as a serialization on these little um, things just all over Brooklyn. And I want uh, each story that you read to tell you where the next one is. Uh, I have left spaces after a full stop. Um, you're not going to get an editing point for a space after a full stop. So um, spaces after full stops will they don't show up in InDesign. Um, they don't matter, right? Those, those, where do they, where do they matter? They're not going to show up on the printed page, basically. Um, and when I format this for an ebook, um, I will take those all out with a filter. So we don't worry too much about it there. But, um, I mean, if you want to be um, persnickety, you can do it. But they don't actually, they don't matter. They're, those are all going to get caught in the proofreading pass. Um, some summer, the spearmen fidgeted against you. Let's see. But if we have two spaces, that's when we want to catch. Uh, professionally, on the basis of how much I have read, I don't see any spaces after the full stop. Wait, space after a period? If you have a double space after a period, they matter. But remember, a space is just empty space on the page. So I hope we're talking about the same thing. Um, let's see. Okay, boy. Yeah, I don't... Can you, like, type? what you're saying exactly. Like, here's here's what I think you're saying, right? I think you're saying, like, that that is there, right? The space is after the full stop there. Well, you don't leave that in when you format the ebook, but you also don't really worry about it when you're doing um, a content edit right here. This is what we would call um, a copy edit, where we're just worrying about the words and so forth. Later, we'll do a line edit, where we worry about um, periods and blah, 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 and so forth. That's a, The proofreader does that. Not me. Um, but if you're talking about something different, please clarify. All right, so some summer. Um, let's get back to this. The spearmen fidgeted against the weight of their arms. 
Flashing back to the drawbridge, Flinzer realized he must have been adrift for a minute or more. He could only hope it came across as a dramatic stare down. Um, so stare down. Mm, so stare down doesn't quite work here. Uh, <laughs> it's not. A stare down is too much here. <laughs> I think pause is a little bit funnier. He could only hope it came across as a dramatic pause. Moraney soaked it all in and let him languish. And let him languish. The old man knew a thing or two about losing the thread. So Moraney is decrepit. He's like Mr. Burns level old. Um, we'll see, Flinzer, sh Flinzer shrugged at last. We will or we won't. Bring me Three Wolf's body, boy. And he calls him boy here. I want him intact. Every finger and toe. Try not to mark him much. What? Why? Flinzer squinted at the unusual request. I'm having him stuffed. <laughs> Moraney smiled wide. I'd, I'd like to get some clarification if... Um, so my theory is that you have a period here. Um, because he's, uh, it's not a continuation of the sentence. It's a separate sentence. No deal. How do I know how many fingers he's got left? It's freezing up here. The wanted poster. Let's take a look. Because wanted poster seems a little... The way Bill is more... Okay, yeah. That's not the word that I think. Marini smiled wid. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I got I got that right. No deal. How do I know how many fingers he's got left? It's freezing up here. The bounty poster said a hundred ducats for three wolves' head. If you want us to drag the whole body in, it's a double. Treble if you want him alive. Uh-huh. Three hundred, if you want him alive. I, th I think this works a little bit better. No deal. How do I know how many fingers he's got left? It's freezing up here. The bounty posters said a hundred ducats for three wolf's head. If you want us to drag the whole body in, it's double. Three hundred, if you want him alive. Pa. No. Never mind all that. It's whimsy anyway. I doubt your mangy crew will amount to much. We'll see, Flinzer repeated. Okay. So this uh, we'll see thing here happens a bunch of times. Um, we will or we won't. Uh, so I think he repeats this too. In the unlikely event you scoundrels somehow succeed, you boys better mess... <laughs> In the unlikely event... Uh, I ooh, Unlikely event is too wordy. In case you scoundrels somehow succeed, you boys better mess best. You boys had best make damn double sure you kill all three wolves after. Elsewise, they'll hound you under the ends of the ark. Uncanny creatures. All right, this is. Sorry for interrupting. If I write a sonnet and it's a bit more than fourteen lines and sixteen, would it be considered a sonnet or a poem? It is not a sonnet. Um, if it doesn't follow the rigid structure of the sonnet. Um, Asian poems are a little bit different. Um, they're structured, but they tend to have um, uh, they they tend to have uh, for longer each longer. They have a different form for each longer thing. A sonnet has to be exact, um, so just don't call it a sonnet, um, or call it like a fat sonnet or whatever, or a superfluous sonnet because you've got too much up in there. That's all I'd do. Um, all right, we will or we won't. In case you scoundrels somehow succeed, you boys had best make damn double sure you kill all three wolves after. Elsewise, they'll hound you under the end of the ark. Okay, ark is capital. Uncanny creatures. Already underway. 
We'll kill the four wolves first to draw him out. It's already underway. We'll kill the three wolves. We'll kill those wolves first to draw him out. All right, there's a comma there. Yeah, because we'll kill those wolves. It's like it's a it's like a time clause, saying when they do it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get started now, posting all your poems and stuff on TikTok, because that's the real currency of the future: is um, developing a following on Chinese social media. It's already underway. We'll kill those wolves first to draw them out. Moraney was taken aback at Flinzer's tack. <laughs> so stupid. Wouldn't recommend that. Why not? If you men can catch Three Wolf with his pants down, who's to say what might transpire? Perhaps some star will shine upon you. But if he's riled by the death of his flea-bitten friends, you lot haven't a half a hope in hell. <laughs> That's too much. But if he's riled by the death of his flea-bitten friends, you lot having a hope in hell. Three Wolf's wrath will be the end of more than you. See, this it doesn't um it doesn't track right. Like this doesn't I, I can't imagine somebody saying this shit. Um let's go back. In case you scoundrels somehow succeed, you boys are best. We will or we won't. Likely won't. But if you scoundrels should somehow succeed, heed me. You best make damn double sure you kill all three wolves after. They'll hound you under the ends of the ark. Uncanny creatures. All right, cool. That's more of like a creepy old man threat. It's already underway. We'll kill those wolves first to draw them out. Moraney was taken aback at Flinzer's tack. Wouldn't recommend that. Well, why not? If you men can catch Three Wolf with his pants down, who's to say what might transpire? Perhaps some star will shine upon you. But if he's riled by the death of his flea-bitten friends, you lot having a hope in hell. Three Wolf's wrath will be the end of more than you. It's all right. I, I don't like it. I think it's um, it's a little too wordy. Let's take out some star will shine upon you. In the context of this fantasy world, that's a religious statement, and I just I don't want to conflate him with religiosity. Only makes sense if you've read all the other books and you haven't. If you men can catch Three Wolf with his pants down, who's to say what might transpire? But if he's riled by the death of his flea-bitten friends, you lot having a hope in hell. Three Wolf's wrath will be the end of more than you. It's okay, so now this is, now we're going from a monologue, nobody would possibly say, to like, this is may be plausible for these characters in a fantasy-type situation. We'll see, Windsor said a third time. He was sick of the sight of Moraney and wanted to leave, but their parlay was incomplete. I like that. Their parlay was incomplete. Gangsta. Uh, Windsor ignored the trembling pikes and pressed on. Uh, I wonder, trembling seems wrong there. Let's see. I like jittery there. Yeah, I like that. Because <laughs> they're still pointing spears at him, and their hands are getting tired because they've been parlaying for like half a week here. We'll see, Flinzer said a third time. He was sick of the sight of Moraney and wanted to leave, but their parlay was incomplete. Flinzer ignored the jittery pikes, pikes and pressed on. 
When I bring you Three Wolf's Head, I want the entire sum before the sun sets. No partial payments, no excuses. Are we clear? Drivel. You can't make demands on the back of what you've yet to do. Moraney parried with a lemon... Moraney parried with a lemon-sucking smirk. <laughs> oh, I don't think I can get away with lemon-sucking smirk. Wait, are they still doing fucking April floods in the chat? No. No, April floods is supposed to be over. So I think uh, Demogorgor is just banning everybody from the server. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> Let's see. Que mas, que mas. Not because you're fat, you're fat, you're fat. No man, no want you. Drivel. You can't make demands on the back of what you've yet to do. Moraney parried with a lemon-sucking smirk. I want your word before all these men, else we'll turn right around and hunt some other bounty. And I don't kill anything for free. If you want those wolves dead, you can cough up ten ducats apiece. Moraney took a long time considering. His gloomy eyes glazed and stared right through Flinzer. How many men had stood in the same spot, certain they'd be the ones? If Flinzer could figure out what mistakes they'd made, perhaps he and his troop could be saved. At last, Moraney raised a bony palm. On my name, Moraney. Lord of Skywork Keep, Vanguard of Adder Vale, I swear it so. A hundred ducats, true gold for Three Wolf's Head, before sunset, on the very day you supply it. I won't pay a whit for wolves. You want to ignore my sage advice, that's your problem. Fine, Flinzer spat. He turned his back on Moraney and stalked away. Swirls of snowflakes curled down from the seven spur... Uh, Swirls of snowflakes curled down around the seven spurned hunters as they slogged back down the mountain. It was a cold and miserable night. Okay, cool. So we get through chapter one um, there. And um, so one of the things to consider, we, we got through eight total pages there. One of the things to consider is that originally we had this prologue to the piece, which I think we need to rewrite and stick back into the piece. Uh, show more. Let's take a look at the entire prologue. All right, so this is short, I guess. Yeah, let's do... Oh, no, this doesn't... It doesn't work because of the way that we write the next thing. Okay, so... Let's just consider when we have rewritten the entire story... We might do a prologue that points the men into the apex of the action at the very beginning here so that people have a reason to slog through. In fact, I think that's um, uh, so grape. <laughs> what the fuck? Is that what kids are saying these days? Lord. I have never heard somebody say. Um, so, command, enter. All right, so zero. Okay, cool. Okay, so we need just just on the on the analysis of how bulky that chapter is, how much of an info dump that chapter is. We need to have a, a prologue here to the story, which throws the reader into and just lets the reader know later these guys will be in peril for their lives, right? This is a very corny way to um, do it. It's it's ham fisted. Um, so I am open to better ideas. Good Ultra Max Pro Grape is not distorted. Well, y'all are wild now. Uh, Hose X, are you an American or are you in some other country where it makes sense to call something grape? Like how like in, in I guess in Spanish, uva sounds a little bit like uber. So um, I could see a leap from good to grape. Uh, when you truly know what you read and you really understand what is meant, that's grape. Oh, so grape, um, is 
a uh, continuation of this word called grok. Um, grok was in, this is a word that somebody made up, but uh, India, gotcha. So this is, <laughs> so it might be that Hindus are just saying grape all the time. Um, but there is a word called grok. Let me, let me take you to this word. Um, what does grok mean in slang? So what is grok from? It's from this story. Um, oh God. Um, it's from Stranger in a Strange Land. It's a Heinlein story. And grok was about, um, like a type of understanding where two people were fully in, um, Martian raised human who comes to earth as an adult, bringing words from his native tongue and unique perspective. Grok was adopted by the youth culture of America and has since peppered the vernacular of people who uh, do it. So Grok is to understand profoundly and intuitively. Um, oh, you're a Muslim. Well, happy Eid and Ramadan and so forth. Did you, did you like, uh, did you make it through the entirety of Ramadan? I was dating an Egyptian girl for a little bit. So I have, um, Deep in, I still speak uh, Kalilin, a little bit of Arabic, but um, a Muslim in India. So are you like in J and K or something like that? Um, I have a bunch of readers in J and K um, because I think that they're constantly getting bombarded by Pakistani shells. So they spend all time inside uh, just reading stories. But um, in the disputed zone, I don't know why anybody would fight over any part of India. Just, you can have it. <laughs> Not the entire, but I did some. Ah, I don't know. If you're going to Islam, do Ramadan, do the Hajj, do the whole thing, right? Allah is uninterested in halfway measures. And it's good for you, too. Um, yeah, do the entire Ramadan if you're going to bother at all. That's my advice. All right, so we do need to have a prologue there. I'm... Reasonably satisfied with this first pass at it. I know that we're a little rusty, and some of the people who are um, who are strong editors are not in the thing. Uh, we will probably do another pass of this whole chapter tomorrow, um, just because when you are taking this many kind of linguistic liberties, you need your writing to be as concise as possible. Sigma spotted. I'm, I'm, I was wrong about Isakai being against the Quran. I am sorry. No. Oh. What was I reading about? I was watching a debate yesterday. Um and it was really insufferable. Uh it was like one of those uh Muhammad Aisha debates or whatever that are the edge lords love to get into there. But um whew, those are some those are some wild surus. They they were a different breed back there. Everything again is against Quran. I don't even have a Quran in my house anymore. I got a bunch of Bibles floating around. But um yeah, I would recommend against dating a Muslim girl if you can avoid it. Um, unless you're going to get like a bunch of them, right? So if you're going to get like four wives, Muslim is the only way to go. Uh, don't get around those Mormon women. They're weird, right? Like a golden plates and so forth. But if you are not looking to have like a bunch of wives, like I'd give those Muslims a pass, man. It's just it's too much. Uh, everyone here mocks about the Aisha theory. What's that? From what I understand, it's not a theory, really. <laughs> like, um, uh, it, it's kind of historical fact. Uh, as far as they don't get the answer. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just come out and say it. I I don't think that he was really a prophet. I think he was a dude who said some stuff and got over his head, and uh, the whole thing is just like a big misunderstanding. And I think Jesus was probably the same way. He was just a guy going around saying stuff, and then people started taking him way too seriously, and the, the fame got over his head. The same thing happened to Weave. Um, yeah, not theory. I mean, it's all theory. We don't know what actually happened back then. All we have is what people said. Like, uh, Muhammad could have, uh, you know, been been like telling us, like warning us all about Skynet, and people just misquoted him. But um, anyhow, it's not interesting. I have one story that's sort of religious that I think I can't remember if we edited it on stream or not, but, um, all right. So I'm happy. I try to do one chapter a day. So tomorrow we are going to do, uh, the chapter where they actually, um, foreshadow 
the antagonist in the story. Um, although this chapter also foreshadowed the antagonist in the story there. So we're going to start on page 12 tomorrow, uh, which starts with, On the thickest limb of an ancient black cypress, a well-concealed watcher eyed the switchback path. As the simpleton stumbled downhill, he scratched his brow and wondered how the suckers kept coming. Seven. Oh, I want to see what's going on there. All right, well, you can subscribe if you feel like it and join us every single day. Um, or not, you know. Be your own man. If you want to see more books and stuff, um, they are available for free at zagzyyz.com. If you see a book and you want it and can't afford it, just message me and I will send you a free copy. Because I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it to have something to fill the dead air between waking and sleep. And uh, yeah, everybody have a good day today. Thank you for tuning in. And there will be more of these. Oh, shit. And uh, if you want to write your own science fiction book, I have a article on how to finish it. Just holler at me at some later time, and I will tell you how it is done. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Shout out to Big Jira, uh, to Catalyst, to Hosex. <laughs> I was going to say Jose X. Because uh, that's funny to me. And the fan fictioneer guy here who joined up here. Uh, thank you all for joining in to our broadcast. And that, I'm afraid, is all.